tastes as we age, so the number of taste buds decrease as you age. Um, so each remaining taste bud also begins to shrink. Sensitivity to the five tastes often declines after age 60. In addition, your mouth produces less saliva as you age, and this can cause dry mouth, which can affect sense of taste. And I think that's why we get older, we want to season stuff more. Um, and I've seen some communities, will put, they won't put salt and pepper on the table, they'll put something else out there that would be more healthy for them, but will definitely add to the flavoring of you know, whatever meal that they're eating. Um, taste and smell, you know, kind of go hand in hand. Uh, if you ever eat something, try plugging your nose and then during mid-shoe, opening it, and you can actually experience you know, the taste even so much more so. Um, it, yeah, and it becomes less sharp with aging. You know, while the number of taste buds you know, decreases, reduced flow of saliva leads to diminished taste, the sense of smell declines rapidly in your 50s. By your 80s, smell detection is almost 50% poorer than it was in your younger years. As these senses become blunted, food flavors and scents may become less appetizing. One way to make sure you eat enough is adding spices to increase the flavor of foods. And uh, I know of some communities that have, are doing some stuff that are outside of you know, just salt and pepper, because salt is not good. Um, so, programming ideas for taste. So, I like to see, or I've seen a lot of blind taste testing. You know, so, so doing different chocolates, doing different teas, doing different cheeses, doing different wines and beers, different ice creams, fruit and veggies, pretzels and various sauces, honey mustard, spicy ranch, barbecue sauce, jelly beans. Um, I'm also seeing like taste from around the world. I know we kind of touched on that before, like something with the site as we're like doing virtual reality or doing these arm trail travel, armchair travels, you know, just providing different tastes. And I know one of our communities that we work with every month is a different theme and they have one day a week where they're bringing a, or a cuisine from that specific, that specific country. So what do you guys do? What do you guys do for taste? Anything unique, specific, anything you're willing to share? Okay. A lot of times it's different. There's like three different types of dips that you choose from. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, what's in your bag? We we went and we did this this morning, so they're not stale. But we put together some jelly beans for you. You guys are lucky because I was gonna get you the Harry Potter ones that had <laughs> rose ones in them. But we got you the Jelly Belly ones that are that are much better. So you're gonna avoid the vomit ones. Um, I, they had some gross ones. So you guys are lucky. You guys lucked out on that one. So I do have to say that. But um, yeah, these are all good. I checked the flavors before, and I think we have the bag somewhere. So if you're curious what anything is, you know, feel free. Um, cool. So moving on forward. So hearing. Hearing. So, a couple of facts. Speakers at a concert can expose you to approximately 120 decibels of sound, roughly the same loudness of a jet plane taking off. Um, another one of the interesting hearing facts is that seven and a half minutes of exposure to this intensity can lead to permanent hearing loss. You should have told me this when I was 18, because yeah. I wouldn't have gone to as many concerts and stood as close as possible right next to the speaker. And you kind of leave and it's just ringing. And, I, and I'm, I just turned 29 last week, and I can tell you my hearing is starting to go. My girlfriend might say I have selective hearing, where when she asks me to do things, I don't really hear that. Um, but yeah, so it's just interesting to know. Um, and it's not that your ears don't stop hearing when you sleep, or your hear so your ears don't stop hearing when you sleep, your brain just chooses to ignore the sound. So it's kind of interesting as you sleep how that happens. And something that's actually, not a lot of people know about. You don't need to clean the wax out of your ears unless you have like an abnormal condition. Um, ears push the excess wax out as needed. And if you talk to like an audiologist, you know they can do it for you, but you shouldn't be putting Q-tips in there. It's actually not good for you. Crazy, I know. I couldn't do it. I can't do it. Um, so as you get older, so your ability to hear for high frequencies deteriorates as you get older. You know specifically the hair cells closest to your outer ear begin to break down, uh, which makes it harder and harder to hear the uh, high frequency sounds. Sounds like the sound of ocean waves, you know, they, they get more difficult. 80% of people over the age of 85 have some sort of hearing loss, and only one in five that can benefit from a hearing aid are actually wearing one. And what we find the main reasons for that are, excuse me, 
cost of hearing aids, you know, they can be quite costly. My grandmother was not in a position to, to get them. Um, the stigma around them, you know, a lot of people have eyeglasses and it definitely, you know, helps me to see. But like hearing aids is one of those physical indicators that someone's getting older. And I, I, I was talking to a couple people around the conference that, you know, said that they could, they should wear them, but they just don't want to. You know, they don't want to have that. And, and it's interesting that hearing loss from the time that it, it takes about seven years from when you actually start getting treatment um, to actually do that. So, and the balance in the equilibrium is controlled in the inner ear. So fluid and small hair in the inner ear stimulate the auditory nerve and this helps the brain maintain balance. So as we get older, you know, this definitely impacts uh, hearing loss impacts sense of balance. And I actually saw somewhere, I was talking about it yesterday, you know, someone with moderate hearing loss has like a three times percent chance of uh, having a history of falling. Um, and as you age, structures inside the ear begin to start to change and their functions decline. So, you know, as we get older, you know, we struggle to hear, uh, which I think, you know, a lot of us encounter on a daily basis. So programming ideas for hearing, meditation, you know, what we started off this, this talk with, music therapy, I think this is one of the most powerful things that I've, I, I see happen, especially in, in populations of memory care residents. Um, just see some amazing things happening. Nature sounds, you know, that's always great. Name that tune. You can watch a concert online, listen to poetry online. YouTube has so much different stuff on it. You can just search anything you really want. If I mean, I've gone to communities and played big band top 40 all out of YouTube. Um, it's a great resource to have a lot of free stuff in there. And a silent disco. Was anyone at the uh, reception last night? Mm -hmm. some, some people saw a silent disco? All right, cool. We'll talk about that in a second. But before we, we get into that, I'm curious, do you guys have any specific things that you do for, for sound? Karaoke. Karaoke, yeah. This was actually one of the karaoke winners yesterday. So. Look at you. And, yeah. <laughs> and he won the, one of the dance competitions, too. So. Uh oh. Yeah. I think he just came for those. <laughs> I need to ask for a demonstration. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you had to be there yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have the video soon enough, so okay. we, can, we can do that. Um, but silent disco, so, you know, my company with these headphones, we help everyone hear at the perfect volume during group activities, and we actually have communities that are doing music therapy that is turning into silent discos in these communities, and I actually brought you some clips just to kind of show you that. And some of these are actually pretty awesome. So we're gonna put the headphones back on. Um, you won't hear the music, but you'll hear like the people's interactions. Um, so, and if you can guess the song, you get a point. So not that much dancing, but you know, the singing along is happening. But here, here, I got some more for you here. This is... Good moves, good moves. So before before I play this one, so the gentleman in blue is a uh, is a resident, you know, living with memory care, or uh, living with dementia, and this is his wife, and they actually are listening to their wedding song Aww. while they're listening to this, and she said afterwards, you know, this is the first time in years she felt like a a wife and not a caregiver. Mm -hmm. So I'll play this here for you. Real actually a former programming director and uh, she, she recently started working for us and 
she'll travel around and help out our communities and throw some of these silent disco events. Sound, we're really trying to impact social isolation through hearing. You know, it's not just what's coming in the ears, it's what's happening between them. Um, and I, I want to show you some inspiration for this company. And this is actually one of our, one of my co-founders' grandmothers. She just turned 96 last week, uh, Mama Bella. And she lives at home, very severe hearing loss. Um, and she is, you know, living with dementia. And this is what it was like for her to hear. Um, so this is kind of give you a quick experience. And this is my other co-founder, Jake, here. Feel free to get up. We're done. So you guys, we can have a good time. gave you is happy, so it all comes back. Yeah. <laughs> if 
don't know how much longer I'm out of dance moves. No one wants to leave. Yeah, no one wants to leave. You do this all day long, don't you? I made requests too, so. Yeah. <laughs>